Hi, my name's Brendan Watt, and welcome to the One Choice from Change podcast, where I give you the tools to create something totally different beyond the status quo, and where you get to become as different as you are. What if there is nothing wrong with any of the choices you've made up until now? I'm inviting you to be aware that every choice creates something. So, what will you choose today? Hello, everyone. I am Brendan Watt. Welcome to the One Choice from Change podcast. Now, there's been a little bit of a break on this podcast, as you may have noticed, and I'm going to do this a little different this time. This is going to be little um, packages of shows, and basically with the idea of different um, different topics, different things as a as a way of me opening up about my journey of consciousness and also hope hopefully that being a contribution to you and seeing um how it is so different and so unique to each and every one of us when we go on this path to finding us and i say that because that whole finding us thing seems it seems so far out there sometimes it's like we're on this journey to find something that that exists outside of us but when in fact on this journey is actually unlearning all of the things about ourselves that we've made real and true and I might say there was a lot of those things for me a lot of things that I decided that I was while knowing I wasn't then looking for this thing outside of me as if if I found that thing everything would work out but what I didn't realize in that was it's always been here for all of us all along yet we have to choose it so in this um this series this clump of shows what i want to look at is it never looks the way that you think it's going to and i've been i've been on this journey with access consciousness which i will be talking about i'll be sharing the tools of access consciousness and and how that has been such a such a gift in my life while also once again never showing up the way you think it's going to and i'm going to begin with uh something i've been talking about a lot lately and something that has um you know probably been out there a lot in the world and i'm doing my best to be as honest and open about it as i can because you know what i've learned in life is and what I'm learning a lot more now is some of our greatest gifts, some of our greatest capacities are hidden from ourselves. We hide them from ourselves underneath all of the judgment that we heap on top of it, which in other words, what we talk about in access consciousness is every wrongness. What if every wrongness is your greatest strongness? What if all of those things that you've made yourself so wrong for throughout your life are actually the things that contain the gifts and the possibilities that would actually give you access to all of you. So one of the big things for me, one of the greatest wrongnesses in my life has been alcoholism. And one of the things that I realized about myself, and I've probably known this my whole life, like when I look back, I've, when I look back honestly at it, I've known I've had a problem with alcohol since the first day I picked up a drink. And was this something I was willing to look at? Hell no. I did not want to look at it because for me, being an alcoholic, having alcoholism, um, you know, anything to do with that was such a wrongness. So for me, I kept it such a secret from everybody else, but also from myself, not knowing that I was actually using it to destroy myself. So six months ago, well, actually seven months ago now, I got to a point where I'd done seven months sober prior to this. I actually last year um, checked myself into a rehab clinic in Italy after just getting, you know, out of control and see the thing with alcoholism for me is once and, and being an alcoholic is I cannot drink. My body has an allergy to it. So I take one drink and that is bye-bye, Brendan. Brandon is gone. Brandon has left the building. And, you know, so last year, after several attempts made in vain to stop, I checked myself into this rehab place, you know, and I remember being there so uncomfortable, so knowing that in order to deal with this, in order to get through this for myself, there was going to be a level of pain. 
a level of discomfort and a level of awareness of myself and everywhere that I'd been holding my back, myself back that I would have to be willing to go through in order to change it. So what I did was I was in this place for, I think it was 13 days. I held on every day just to get out of there, you know, and I did whatever they told me to do just to appear to be changing so I could get out of there while knowing I knew. And when I look at it now, I knew from having this honesty with myself, I had no desire to change it at that point. So, you know, after getting out of this, um, this rehab place and being on stage again, just a couple of weeks later at a facilitators class in Mexico, knowing that it wasn't right, you know, and spending the next seven months in sobriety. Well, it wasn't actually sobriety. I wasn't drinking, but I was also lying to myself about the fact that anything had changed. So I say that because I've, I've seen it in myself so much and I see how much we do that as if change is rightness. So for me, what I did was, okay, well, as long as I can appear to have changed, I've gotten this right. Another part of my life that I can create the image of perfection of, look, I got through that while knowing I didn't. So in doing this and and over that seven months facilitating some, you know, some rather big classes and and still holding on, thinking that I could get through it, thinking that, you know, if I ignored it long enough, eventually this would go away. And that's basically the way I've lived my life with a lot of things, not all of it, but a lot of things is if I can avoid this, the more I can avoid it, the eventually, eventually if I shut off the energy to it, which is what we do with avoiding, we we think that we actually disconnect from it when we actually don't. So I was appearing as if I was disconnecting from this thing while actually feeding it at the same time. And so fast forward seven months of doing this, and there's a lot of months that I'm going to be talking about. This brought me to seven months ago, right? And seven months ago, I had a relapse in this, um, in this sobriety, in this not drinking. And it was, uh, I would say something that I didn't cognitively see, see coming, but also once again, when I look at it now, energetically, I knew that this destruction was going to be there. So I began this relapse of mine and, you know, I can kind of laugh about it now because it's, it, once again, it holds so many gifts in it when I can look at it now from the honesty with myself. <clears throat> so in this, basically I went off the rails. I did 12 days of um, 12 days of drinking and basically 12 days of a blackout and that was the other thing for me the alcoholism had gotten that bad and the progress the progression in it which is one thing i've learned about that disease is it progresses even when you're not drinking and so for me it was basically i could get to a point where i'd have a drink or two and that would be it no more brendan brendan is gone brendan has left the building and in this created such destruction not only in my own life, but in a lot of lives around me, and a lot of um, a lot of the lying that went with it, a lot of the hiding, a lot of the secrets. And I say this because my my target in this with this is, you know, uh, with opening up to it is getting to the point where seeing the gift in it. So that actually, see, because if you can look at that and go, wow, like, okay. Th and this to me has been the greatest wrongness of my life by far. Um, and I can say that like after this 12 days, when I finally went, okay, I finally came, got present enough in my world after really wanting to get out, got present enough in my world to go, okay, I have choice. I can either keep going down this path and I will end up either dead, I will end up destroying everything, um, killing myself, you know, do all of that stuff, all of that destructiveness, or I can change. Once again, that same energy of 
I knew in order to create that change, in order to choose that change, there was a level of pain, a level of uncomfort and a level of discovery of myself that I had yet to be willing to go through. So I did. And, you know, I, I want to say this because this journey again shows up nothing the way you think it is going to. And for that first two months after making that choice, I felt of myself less than I could ever imagine anybody ever feeling of themselves, the shame, the blame, the regret, the guilt, the, all of these different things that were coming up. And, and in all honesty, I wanted to give up many, 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 many countless times. Did I want to give up on me? Did I want to give up on my future? Did I want to give up on consciousness? Did I want to give up on everything that is now vital to me, that I now have so much value of. And I say that because what I've learned with this is we always have another choice. There was There is always one step beyond what you think you cannot step beyond, which is where magic begins to exist. And I, I in hopes with this, can tell you from this space of whoa, like that's kind of heavy shit. Well, yeah, it is heavy shit, but I'd chosen it and I wasn't willing to look at it and I wasn't willing to be present in my life with it. And so on this journey, this, this part of the journey over the last seven months, it's been a lot of hard choices. You know, a lot of the choices that I'd made in my life were about how can I make the easy choice to get what I want now? Not how can I look at what's actually going to create a greater future for myself, inclusive of everybody in my life, but not only everybody in my life, in knowing that the choices that I make and the choices that each and every one of us make affect our world. Now, I say that because for me, the choices I was making while drinking were all about me. The choices I was making about drinking were oftentimes against other people. and. You know, I got to a point in that, and I look back at it now because once again, I wasn't really present with it. I look back at it now and the, once again, to, to look at something like that in your life, how much do we want to go to that is terrible, that is wrong, that is evil, that is bad, rather than look at it and go, okay, what was that? So for me, without even trying to create a justification of it. If you look at something like that in your life from, let's say from more of an aerial point of view, from more of an, uh, a big picture, not the, well, I have this judgment. Because you notice when you go to judgment, it creates such a, a, a compression of your space, such a contraction of you, because you have to eliminate everything that's true in order to hold on to the lie that is the judgment. So for me in the past, for the for the 41 years of my life leading up to this, it was all about looking at everything to do with the alcoholism and alcohol through judgment. So everything was about the contraction of me in order to hide it from myself, rather than looking at it from this bigger picture and, and actually being in question with it and going, what is this? So in looking at that, what I did was over this seven months of making the hard choices, which is not going to the judgment, how, you, you know, because we look at hard choices as, well, the hard choices are the big choices. Well, what if the hard choices are the choices that you make in every moment that go against who you've decided you are? Now, what do I mean by that? Well, for me, especially recently in really stepping into to making a lot of different choices is, you know, even this, um, even to have extreme amounts of caring for myself or somebody else where, you know, when you want to make somebody wrong or you want to make yourself wrong or you want to make yourself right, or you want to make somebody else right. It's, it, gives you a validation of who you've decided you are. Well, you know, I'm right. Let me prove to you I'm right. 
and it it just valid you know it builds more of that you know staunchness of you that validation of who you've decided you are but in that moment in that moment rather than i'm right you're wrong you're you're right i'm wrong is going to allowance which is wow interesting point of view i have this point of view about myself interesting point of view they have this point of view interesting point of view i have the point of view they have this point of view <clears throat> which is this bigger picture notice with that like when you choose something like that it in the moment and i and i say this because this is what i've realized about me and in, in these choices recently is in the moment of choice i feel like i'm choosing against myself and i do say feeling because it's this um intensity with it is it's like well having extreme allowance in this moment is just like i don't know that i can't define that i can't confine that i can't predict it i can't predict an outcome with that whereas doing right and wrong doing fight doing judgment doing all of those things i have the predictability of what's next so with this what i've learned and what i'm really seeing so much difference um, in myself with it is it may be the hardest choice to make in the moment to choose from a space of what's true for you. But 10 minutes later or an hour later or a day later or, or you know, down the path a little bit, everything begins to open up because now you've started being something different in each moment. So for me, I've always had this thing of, well, you know, I want to be everything I am, but let me keep choosing as if I'm a, as if, you know, the, <clears throat> excuse me, let me keep choosing stupidity while asking for being everything I am, but never actually having the willingness to really make the choices that are going to create that. And in that is the total refusal of what it is you're asking for. So for me, it was just this pipe dream of asking you shall receive is expect the universe to deliver what you're unwilling to have, what you're unwilling to be, what you're unwilling to know, what you're unwilling to receive. And I say that part because in my hopes with this is I, I give certain things like this from my life from an experience of it doesn't work. <laughs> It really doesn't work. So, you know, in this, now seeing this and 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 living from these different things. And I don't I I talk about this stuff too, because I've also done some incredibly brilliant things over the years as well. And I acknowledge that about me now too. But once again, if I don't look at these things, if I don't look and we don't look at our lives from this space of difference from this bigger space of what is this and what is this creating? What am I avoiding with this? What am I trying to defend with this? Which I will get to more of these tools throughout these next um, few shows. Then we keep kind of going down the same path, expecting a different result, which is what I was doing with the alcohol. Let me keep making the same choices, expecting a different result, which is actually a very good definition of insanity. And I see with, I see these different things with um, addiction and how we'll use all of these things outside of ourselves as a way to take us out of being present. But what I've learned with me in this is that's what I saw everybody else doing. How many of you have had an extreme amount of sensitivity to the awareness that you have? I mean, I was always highly sensitive to my awareness, but when I saw other people using substance as a way of diminishing their awareness, well, okay, let me try that because having this level of awareness while also having the point of view that there's something that I need to do with that awareness, uh, can I just get rid of that awareness now, please? thinking that if I get rid of the awareness that my life is going to be easier when it doesn't anybody else, you know, that, you know, when you try and get rid of something out of your life, thinking if you get rid of it, it'll make your life easier, but you avoid it to get rid of it. And then it's still there anyway. Yeah. Well, that's what I was doing. So over these last 
back to my thing. Um, over these last seven months of truly um, embracing sobriety, and one thing I can say about myself now is uh, by the time this show airs, actually, I will be around about seven months sober, and I love it. I, uh, I love being sober, and I also love um, that I can talk about this stuff, and I can talk about the fact that I'm an alcoholic. Now, a lot of people have this thing with that, and I did too, uh, two years ago almost, when it came this I had a friend actually ask me about being an alcoholic and I just went walls up. I do not want to hear that. I cannot hear that because for me, the word alcoholic had such a stigma to it and I had so much judgment of it. So once again, with that, the judgment I had of it wasn't, didn't allow me to actually receive where I could, where the awareness of it could contribute to me changing it. It was a total rejection of what is. And once again, because I had all these judgments of it. So I, being on this path now with sobriety, I actually had a friend of mine um, probably a month ago. We were, it came up um, in a class that we were doing. And I was talking, I was asking Gary Douglas and Simone Millicis and Dane here some questions about this for me because there was, there's been stuff coming up with it, right? And um, you know, we we're talking about being an alcoholic and what that is and, and different stuff with that. And I had this friend say to me, well, it's, I don't believe you're an alcoholic and there's, you know, that's trying to put you in a box and that's got a lot of judgment to it and all these things. And I, I said to her with total caring, um, I need to know that I'm an alcoholic. I need to have that for me because for me, that's a recognition of the fact that my body's allergic to alcohol. And see, in that, I, I now have choice to be with that. So what if like you have those things in your life where it's like, let me not look at it because I have the judgment of it. What if it was okay to look at it and just go, you know what? Like, let's say even with money, for example, because one of the other areas of my life that I've always stuck my head in the sand or up my ass, whichever one came first, <clears throat> hopefully in the sand, but you know, what I would do once again was let me avoid this thinking if I avoid it, it will go away. Well, it didn't, it doesn't, it doesn't change it. But I had so much judgment of myself with my creative capacities. So um, what if it was okay to look at something like that and go, you know what, I have such a judgment of myself that I'm shitty with money. Wow. And in looking at that and actually being present with it, taking the avoidance out of it, and then, you know, and then being in question, <clears throat> excuse me, with it, what would that create as something different with you? What would it create for you if you were willing to have that degree of honesty with yourself, but also the caring that is required to go along with that level of honesty with yourself? Because there's one thing to have honesty with yourself, but to have it and then judge you for everything you're honest with you about, who's going to want to be honest with themselves? Well, we need to get to a space where we can have the caring with us also. So I that is this for now. Um, I hope that was a contribution. I will see you on the next episode. Well, let's go further into this um, into this path of consciousness and how it truly never shows up the way you think it's going to. Thank you. If you found this helpful, please share it and subscribe at onechoicefromchange.com. Until next time, you're only one choice from change. <laughs>